Hi everyone, so today we're going to discuss about AWS Cloud Directives and the security guidelines that can be applied. So, uh, before we get started, uh, there's a little bit about me. I'm a security analyst at AppCircle. I just love to break my reputation API and cloud security. I'm a member of different communities such as NAR, InfoSec, Breaking Bridges, Leaning Circle. I'm an active speaker who loves to share her knowledge with the community or the, in any conference. Agenda of the today talk is what are the possible attack vectors for the AWS cloud? Recognition that help to identify those attack vectors. Some of uh, misconfiguration like IAM misconfiguration, S3 misconfiguration, EC2 misconfiguration, we're going to discuss today. Then detection that can help to identify those misconfiguration and the security controls. So what are the possible attack vectors, right? First is lib credentials. Second instance misconfiguration like you found the EBC snapshot is publicly accessible. EMI is publicly accessible of the instance, right? <clears throat> then EC2 instance having the CV against it or the particular EC2 instance is publicly available, right? Those are the instance misconfiguration. In using default settings, for example, uh, you didn't enable that uh, for the S3 bucket, right? That you having the sensitive information and you have to enable S3 with KMS encryption. Then it's again issue because what if someone get your S3 bucket data and that is even in the plain text, right? Like for example, not encrypted. For example, it's having the credit card details or the credentials, right? So you uh, like you should use, but one of the reason it's default setting and another is like you have you haven't used the IMDA VS2 version and that leading to the SSRF vulnerability, right? S3 misconfiguration like allowing public access or the allowing any user of the AWS to perform any action on S3, right? So S3 misconfiguration. Then access control mix configuration, like you didn't mention, hey, uh, this particular user should has only this much access and you are ending up giving more privilege that that particular user is supposed to do. And that can lead to the external attack vector and the, as well as internal threat, right? Exposure of the resources via firewall, right? So, if you didn't configure the firewall properly, you ending up uh, giving your resource access to any user over the internet. That's most dangerous. Then network security misconfiguration. If your VPC uh, is not properly configured or your inbound outbound rules is not properly configured, right? Then it's again issue anyone on the internet can access. Right. Insecure custom application. So if the web application hosted on EC2 is not properly configured or it's vulnerable to like SSRF or LFI, then it's again issue because a ticket can get access to your AWS credentials. So you know that, hey, these are the possible attack vectors. Now, how can I find those? For that, you have to perform reconnaissance. And I have covered different ways to perform uh, reconnaissance for finding credential, for finding a EC2 instance, or to finding S3 bucket. Finding credentials. Look for the hard-coded uh, credentials stored in JavaScript. Then AWS Cognito credentials in the response, you can find it. If uh, like, how do you find it? I, I have already just in screenshot. I'm gonna discuss how can you find it, right? 
than if the web application hosted uh, is two instances vulnerable to SSRF or LFI. Then also article can find those credentials. Code repositories such as Bitbucket and GitHub. Uh, web. On that also you can find that if public. For example, nowadays many companies uh, publicly expose their code on GitHub. That's all right. But if you are storing the credential on the repository, then it's then it's an issue. You can just uh, or the any attacker can find the credential on GitHub and you are ending up like getting expose your credential on the publicly repository such as GitHub and Bitbucket. Then AWS error messages such as access denied and in the risk sometimes if the properly not configured right uh, it just uh, disclosing that hey this is access denied but your credential are this right so that's issue publicly bs snapshot then emi then emi related credential being clicked in the public images then s3 bucket is also sometimes organization store that employee credentials or the admin credential being stored in the s3 bucket right then it's again issue we're going to discuss an upcoming slide that how can you find those then rds public snapshot uh, in those you can find the rds uh, related credential database credential information then people looking for help online ending up copy pasting that complete information like uh, they say hey i want like i'm facing this issue this is some micro credential or user id can you please help me out and that ending up uh, getting a ticket that hey this what credential belongs to this particular user so these are the standard recon techniques that can help you to get started with the finding credentials right so one of the i have mentioned right that uh, in the response the cognito credential being lit so this is how it looked like now for the cpu uh, misconfiguration right so how can you find the public ec2 instance right for that you need to have the access right so compute one ew amazon aws.com you mentioned in the census and you will have the list of ec2 instance and see if this is those are the ec2 instances publicly accessible right then you can use google doc you can use showdown as well theme search uh, you can apply and you can customize the result based on the what you want right so query based on that then another way is to instance only accessible to uh, this IP address, right? Then, and the, for, there is no prevention against it uh, for the SSH, right? Then you can just do SSH on that particular instance. Same way you can access the MySQL database as well. Now, you must be thinking, hey, how can, how can I found the RDS endpoint? Basically, you can mention site is this and rds amazon aws.com so use the google doc for finding s3 bucket you can use google search google doc showdown senses use osn tools such as sublister and emas to post of naming like that is standard ways of what s3 bucket right naming convection is that s3 like site s3 amazon.com right or s3 amazon uh, s3 site amazon aws right so these are the standards so you can just uh, propose it or in the dns record right you can also find the s3 bucket related information then certification and transparency law then you can use numerous bucket of finder scripts such as there are so many uh, scripts available on the internet such as lazy s3 bucket finder right so you can use those as well and gray head warfare bucket search uh, you can use to finding the s3 bucket 
uh, I have mentioned that how can you find the S3 bucket using Google Doc. So uh, this is the way you can find it. After knowing that what are the other factors and how can you perform the recognition, uh, you should look for the misconfiguration related issue, right? So one of the I have covered is misconfigured S3 bucket. Now, why it's a misconfigured? Because of the policy. Okay, so one is this: you are allowing public access to any. So for explicitly you saying that object can be public, so anyone on internet can access this bucket. Most strangest one is defining full access to authenticate AWS users group. So we are saying anyone with having the valid AWS credential or the authenticated user can access my bucket and even perform uh, copy, read, and the delete operation. So you are basically affecting whole CIA triangle, right? So it's most stranger one policy to be in. Then bucket policy with the read access policy. So some organizations say, hey, we have allowed only read access policy, but you are having in the bucket uh, the sensitive information such as PIA or the purchase history information or credential itself, right? So you should avoid bucket with the read access policy. Then you almost forget about encrypting your AWS S2 bucket. So for example, the bucket having the sensitive information and someone got access, right? And download the data, like purchase history or the credential and your bucket is not encrypted, then they can have the full bunch of the credential that has been stored or PI information or credit card details, which is stored in the bucket. But what if you have applied the encryption technique then even though they got the bucket but they are not able to get the data that hey what are the data available because the attacker is not having the master key so you should use the encryption so what attack vectors we have covered for the like why s3 misconfiguration happened right so far so allowing public access to bucket defining full access control to authenticated AWS user group, defining bucket with the read access policy, enabling write access to everyone group, forgetting to encrypt your AWS resources. Now you've got to know, hey, this happened. Now how you do investigate or what can be done to investigate or what configuration or what services can be used, right? So guard duty help to finding S3 will list an S3 bucket and bucket ERN and even the bucket owner in the finding details. So you might have the fair understanding, okay, uh, what's the ERN of that particular bucket and the, who is the owner of this bucket, right? Then you can use AWS cloud trail log, like at what time the request being made from which IP the request being made, right? Uh, you can use trusted advisor if you configure your S3 bucket, right? And you have allowed the public access. That if the trusted advisor is enabled, then it will give you a alert hey, this is not how you configure, right? Then CloudWatch metric is again the best uh, you can use to get the alert, right? For example, uh, that is get request happen, put request happen, or the delete request happen uh, for your S3 bucket cloud to configure the CloudWatch metric, then you will get the alert that, hey, this is a request being made from this particular resources, right? So it's good to have enable config the AWS managed rule. There are two rules you can choose, S3 bucket read prohibited and S3 bucket bucket public right prohibited based on what uh, applicable to your organization right so based on that you should configure all this now you configure all this but how do you investigate that hey this s3 misconfiguration happened how can i investigate so you should have proper logging mechanism in the place 
now after investigate or all the alerting in the place what security controls can help to prevent from the estimate misconfiguration implement list privilege access right don't allow any authenticated user or any public user to have access to your s3 bucket use iam rules for application and the aws service that require amazon s3 access then enable multi factor authentication at least for the delete operation so even the attacker got the credential and able to delete your bucket but he might not able to uh delete your bucket right he can just only get the data so availability part will be not being compromised <clears throat> consider encryption at data rest because even the attacker will get the bucket right but the data itself it's a uh, encrypted right so and the attacker is not having the master key so this is how you can uh, prevent your confidentiality as well enforcing ssl no standard practice consider vpc endpoint for amazon s3 access for if you are having a large organization or any organization and you are saying that hey this s3 bucket only accessible this organization employee so you should uh, consider mentioning vpc endpoint right so as i mentioned the s3 bucket having sensitive information it can be having cloud relog as well right so yeah one of the things consider s3 object log so it prevent being uh, uh, like object data being deleted which is present in s3 right so s3 object log pre sign url you can assign to the authenticated user so only the user having pre sign url can on the access this s2 bucket most uh, preferable then enable versioning if any change happen that new version will create so this is how can you track the s3 related operation second is you found the credential okay you might be thinking okay i found the credentials am i just supposed to file it or say hey i found the credential that's it no you should enumerate the permission so this is the standard flow i follow got the credential i try to enumerate the permission and see what uh, kind of access i am having right or the what kind of access i am having using victim credentials if i am having any s2 bucket related or the c2 instance and try to get sensitive information after that is there having anything that i can perform the privilege escalation yes so this is you should also taking care of it if not sensitive information is that policy is uh, not assigned properly to that particular user and if i can perform the privilege escalation and get the sensitive information so this is what your uh, attack flow look like when you got the credential so yeah uh, as an attacker i got the victim credential now try to enumerate the permission and found that the user having the iam related and the our user can list anything but what interesting to me that is having sts permission okay but still it's not having like i can have the access to s3 or just download the data or do what i want to do so what can be done so we are aware that uh, we can use the sts so try to get who is the user and is there any policy attached to that user right so yeah this is the way i found the user and the policy being attached to that particular user then try to get the policy and see what kind of policy it has and what is the default policy so default policy is version 1 then list out the all the policy available for that particular user so that might having older or the misconfigured 
policy or the overly permissive policy that might help us so you should look for all the possible policy so we found that hey there are five policy available then enumerate different policies so that you can have the idea to what kind of access you have so previously we had the get and list uh, permission but we found that hey we find having the admin level access why admin level because action star resource star that explicitly saying that you can perform anything on any resources so admin level access now at again i mean hey what can be done make this policy as a default policy right so i just made the, this policy as a default policy and no error message came so we sure that yeah we are able to make this policy as a default pro policy and the privilege escalation happened how from get to the full uh, read write and update operation we have right like you can do anything on any resource uh this is the poc for that like how what kind of privilege i got after making that policy as a default policy so yeah so what was the approach so far you found the hard coded credential like one of the other vector was you found the hard coded credential you try to integrate the permission then you got the im related access you try to integrate the policy and uh, one of the policy was having overly permissive permission uh, like admin level access and and we try to make it as a default policy and it was success so when you find the credential and that was not having uh, too much access don't give up see what else you can do so this is how we can go beyond uh, one of the test is so after, uh, yeah so i have included the poc that how can you do the same actions from the management console basically i'm doing the same thing from the manager management console see this is the v4 here having the admin level access and i'll try to make it as a default policy and see the permission now i'm having is a admin level right so now all things you found that hey my credential been compromised uh, this policy was overly permissive right so to avoid this right so what can be uh, investigation or the detection services for the investigation or detection purpose you can use the services or the tools to identify or to get alert right so for that you can use trusted advisor or the check i am credential report to check or uh, like when the last credential being used at what date at what time to use right then use im tools such as im policy simulator so that you can just uh, see like you can simulate the policy and see what kind of access this user have right use config rule to uh, see what are the policy in the use that so you can uh, use this rule i am policy in use that config rule that checks whether i am policy arn is attached to i am user right i basically specific this poly, uh, rule because this is uh, related to our attack uh, scenario right you can apply many rules i just mentioned one of that then you can use access advisor to get the information about uh, last access information right and what kind of access happened use crowdtrail for the logging like api request obviously been made right then at what time from which ip it has uh, been requested right so you will have the logging information for investigate and analysis and to take step further you can use uh, monitor cloud watch alarms to prevent or, or to get alerted in the future right so for example you can enable for group logins if any im policy changes happen that is also you can record 
right? Uh, so you bring, get alarm that, hey, this policy change. So you can directly perform action. In this case, policy change. And I made it uh, admin. So you should just uh, have the uh, CloudWatch alarm active that you bring notify for saying. Then seeing unauthorized API calls happen, then again you can be alerted. Cloud red configuration changes happen, authentication fails. All these you should be taking care of it. Now you are being alerted and detected. Hey, my credentials being leaked or compromised. You will be like, what should be done, right? So for that. You can just basically create the new credentials and disable the previous compromised credential and remove it. But making sure that you are uh, first creating the new credential and then uh, make uh, deactive the older credential so that if uh, if you directly remove right the credential, then you you might be your website may be bricked down or not uh, like web application will not uh, work properly right so making sure that you follow this standard approach so so far what we have done that uh, we create the new credential disable the older credential so that no longer used to your access account apply list privilege to that particular user and avoid creating user with excessive permission now security controls that can be applied to prevent from this kind of issue use secret manager to store your credentials securely grant list privilege access use access levels to review im permission right configure a multi-factor authentication for your most sensitive information like delete or removing the cloud rate or, or cloud rate configuration changes right enable multi-factor authentication rotate your credential regularly and ensure log metric filter and alarm exists for im policy so you just get alert and you take the action right so these are the controls you can apply now another scenario i have covered that what if you found the public ip of the ec2 instance now how why i'm finding this right so a possible is uh, misconfigured firewall happen, right? No properly inbound or bound rule has been mentioned. So that's why EC2 instance is publicly accessible to you. Now you got the public IP of the EC2 instance. What should be your next uh, step look like, right? Is there any default configuration being used? Is there any ports are open? Is web application running on this particular IP? This is uh, you should must look for, right? Uh, I will uh, give you overview why because I have covered the one of the scenario. So okay, so I found that uh, um I got the IP and the, this particular IP having the web application running on port number eighty, but it's saying that URL must be string not defined. Okay, so I got that hey, something URL parameter being used. So here I say URL ifconfig.com and I got the IP address of the server. Right? So I said, okay, this is vulnerable to SSRI. Okay, so, but you should not limit yourself. Hey, I found the SSRI if your application is vulnerable to SSRI. You should start digging into it, uh, this particular vulnerability that hey, web application vulnerable to SSRI is it's posted on EC2 instance. Okay, role is attached to it. Then try to get the IBM role credential and uh, see what kind of level access you might ending up finding admin level or S3 bucket data. So this is how you escalate. Uh, security severity right so here we did same and we found that hey uh, uh this is what the role attached to it and this are the security credential after getting credential uh, enumerate permission and we found that hey s3 related permission and that also having the credit card details and the admin 
a credential in it right so you just using command to copy or the get data in your system and i was able to get the admin data right so now you can think of like what kind of access i am having as admin so just moving to ip to the admin level access so right so just let's do a text surface analysis why this happened one of the factor default configuration setting usage right we are just allowing to ec2 instance publicly available misconfigure firewall web application hosted on ec2 was vulnerable to ssrf right like no input validation uh, was there on the web application role was having uh, to access to work with the s3 bucket and the data storage in AWS S3 was not encrypted. So, for example, even though Apigar able to get the S3 bucket, but if it's encrypted, how do he get the like credit card details or admin credential, right? So that you can you could have uh, like uh, prevented sensitive information being stored on s3 bucket uh, you should not actually store the admin credential or any user's credential in s3 bucket so you may feel like hey this is most similar uh, sound to like capital one bridge yes so in the capital one bridge the similar scenario was that misconfigured firewall attacker was able to gaining access to an ec2 instance and uh, that is vulnerable to the SSRF and gaining the IM role that is X that is allowed to access S3 bucket and in the S3 bucket he found the credit card details of the users like millions of users. So for this particular scenario, what were the attack vectors? Web application hosted on EC2 instance is vulnerable to SSRF, uh, IMDB. IMDVS version 1 being used, improper bucket policy, storing sensitive information in the bucket, forgetting to encrypt S3 bucket data, right? So I can summarize that misconfigured firewall, right? One of the attack vector, S3 misconfiguration, right? Why S3 misconfiguration? Those are the explanation for that. Default setting uses, see, and the vulnerable web application this is vulnerable to us so this is how the you can correlate the attack vectors now you get to know why this happened like in future how can you detect right so you can use guard duty uh, if there is any c2 misconfiguration or compromise happen guard duty will alert, uh, like help you to identify Conflict rules that uh, specific for EC2 IMD base version to check. It basically check that uh, if EC2 instance metadata version is configured with the instance metadata service version two. Right, so that is most uh, important thing to prevent from the getting IM role credential. Then security hub. It will just uh, give you whole analysis help you to identify that uh, related to config rule im access analyzer that card duty all the findings you can get in the security hub so you should use security hub flow logs like to see like vpc flow logs from where the traffic is coming from right system manager to uh, for the properly configure ec2 instance right then you are aware that your EC2 instance is compromised, but what step you should take, right? For that, invalidate your temporary security credential immediately, stop compromise EC2 instance, take a snip, snapshot of the EPS volume so that, uh, and deploy that particular instance in isolated environment that is uh, being compromised isolated basically uh, no internet access and ideally private subnet and then read through the logs to figure out why right to prevent uh, this kind of attacks 
in future or misconfiguration in future you can use the input validation to prevent from ssrf update your aws ec2 instance metadata services so even though it's vulnerable to ssrf you are still the user will not get the i role credential right then implement list privilege permission um, so that the attacker will have the list privilege access consider encryption of data at rest i'll mention that why i mentioned then constantly monitor only permissive security use groups use your control driver for the separate logging activity and normal account activity security groups why it's matter because you can just uh, mention that only the user which are present in the security group that only allowed to access this ec2 instance so you can avoid the publicly available ec2 instance and uh, why do you separate logging so even the article got access to your credential but he or she cannot uh, remove the your cloud trail or any logging mechanism and then use security hub right uh, like to have the whole analysis on it so things to note that to get to know about the attack vectors right you reconnaissance and the OSN are the key to finding those attack vectors post exploitation has no limit with the cloud so you should like uh, keep looking for the attack additional services like disturb logging and make core changes to attack users right like uh, like internet security teams can check what can be done so that in future what if we are potentially being compromised and another outsider attacker to anything with your services right so yeah making sure that you always apply that least privilege access to any user role group so that you at least avoid the attack surface area and the most common things we have found the misconfiguration of services insecure programming practice and insecure permission like over permissive policy has been there and that leads to the whole account takeover fall and the uh, must take the follow aws security based practices to avoid or to being prevent from being compromised or any prevent from being getting breached in future right i just mentioned some guidelines and tools that can help so these are the guidelines uh, aws white papers having the good documentation around it aws security audit guidelines then scout suit for the automated cis uh, auditing right benchmark auditing for the multi cloud multi cloud roller is basically automated auditing specific for aws s3 inspector to analysis what kind of permission having right like you got the credential and you want to see okay what kind of uh, you don't want to go manually you can just use this tool and see what kind of permission you have like it's publicly accessible or it's having the authenticated any authenticated user can perform any action right so it will give you information around it enumerate i am you can just enumerate the what kind of user like what kind of access the particular user having and paco for the penetration testing purpose it's a penetration testing tool. if any question i ask question and answer i'm open for the question and answer and you can connect me on linkedin and the